Computer building. It can be fun, fulfilling, rewarding, and yes, even arousing. But that is in a best case scenario, and life isn't always roses and lollipops cupcakes, so it's time to take the kid gloves off and talk about what it's like when shit goes pear-shaped. These are the five worst things that can happen when building or setting up a new PC. Excellent! Now, I'm pretty sure that this is the best list possible of this type, but if you think you can do better, of course, let me know in the comments section down below. I'll be rating each of these PC catastrophes on a scale of one to 10 in three categories, cost factor, annoyance factor, and shame factor, as in how ashamed and humiliated you should feel for allowing any of these things to happen. Let's begin. Number five on our list is still hanging around as one of the most annoying things you can realize you did wrong post build, and that's forgetting to install your motherboard's IO shield. Fortunately, when it comes to cost, this is a minor snafu. You won't have to pay any money to fix the problem, but it will take some time to correct, since the only real way to reinstall that shield is to remove the entire motherboard, which is right up there with rebuilding your entire system. Time is money, so we have a cost factor of two. Annoyance also runs high when this problem goes overlooked, so that gets a six, but since ultimately the forgotten IO shield was no one's fault but your own, it's the shame that makes this a true catastrophe with a shame factor of nine. I mean, didn't you watch any of my how to build a PC tutorials? The silver lining here is that this might actually slip off of our list in the future due to the increasing popularity of fixed IO shields, which are much harder to forget to install. The fourth worst thing that can happen when building your PC is a thermal paste mishap. Whether misapplied, overapplied, forgotten entirely, or even applied to the socket instead of the heat spreader, thermal paste application is understandably one of the parts of PC building that makes some people a little squeamish. It is, after all, usually the only goopy part of the job. Here again, we have a low cost factor of three, as just doing thermal paste wrong usually means some extra cleanup time, maybe the use of some extra paper towels or Q-tips. The cost factor can escalate quickly, though, in extreme situations, as applying thermal paste to the socket means you've probably killed your motherboard and rendered it unreturnable possibly your CPU as well, and sometimes forgetting thermal paste can cause parts to overheat and die, although the system should turn itself off before that happens. I've rated the annoyance and shame factors both at seven for this one, as the cleanup process and the feeling bad about it time frame are both towards the higher end of the scale. Now picture this scenario for the third worst thing. Your new gaming PC is fully assembled and functional. You've successfully booted, your hardware is recognized, maybe you've even installed Windows and done some system setup. Then you're checking your drivers on your motherboard support page and you realize, hey, there's an updated UEFI BIOS for my board. I'd better download it and update. Then right at the critical time during your update, the power goes out. Your motherboard is bricked and you cry bitter tears as you pull your system apart so you can return the motherboard for a replacement. That's a cost factor of seven by my estimate as you might be looking at a couple weeks of turnaround time to get a replacement from the manufacturer, annoyance factor of eight due to having to pull your whole system apart, and a shame factor of six, because while you can't always control when a power outage occurs, you might have tried to anticipate this catastrophe by connecting to a UPS before updating, or getting a motherboard with a BIOS flashback feature that allows you to update without a CPU or memory installed, which can actually fix this problem a lot of the time, or by getting a motherboard with a dual BIOS setup that could also work around this situation. Doing either of those things would lower the cost and annoyance factors to two, in this scenario, but otherwise, you're f If you have a weak stomach, I would advise you to look away as we cover these last two items on my list, some of the worst PC calamities that can befall an innocent builder. Whether you're building an AMD system or an Intel system, the CPU interface is among the most delicate and breakable parts of your rig, and bending or breaking pins on the motherboard with an LGA socket or the CPU with a PGA socket is a hard stop to the progress of any assembly process. Check out my LGA versus PGA video for more on this, but I would say that PGA or pin grid array that AMD is using with their mainstream AM4 socket has a slight advantage here when it comes to having a chance at recovery. Bending pins back on an AMD CPU is possible if they're not broken and can often lead to a full recovery of your system. LGA socket pins on a motherboard are way harder to repair though, and in either case, the products are usually deemed to be physically damaged due to end user error by retailers and manufacturers if you try to return them for a replacement, so you might just have to eat the cost of the damaged hardware. It's a dismal situation for those who experience it, with a cost factor of nine, an annoyance factor of eight, and a deep and abiding shame factor of nine. And now the number one worst thing that can happen when building a PC, and that is fire. Straight up. You turn it on, there are sparks, smoke, maybe even flames, and the instant knowledge that something just died. Fortunately, there are many, many fail-safes to prevent this with modern PC components, but that's not to say it's impossible to do. The quickest way to short your hardware, potentially leading to fire and death, is to forget your motherboard standoffs, thus bridging multiple contact points 
on the back of your motherboard that we're not supposed to be connected electrically. Now, there are other ways to short out stuff too, though you could force an 8-pin PCI Express graphics power connector into your supplemental CPU power port on your motherboard. You could misalign slot-mounted expansion cards. You could even go about decorating your rig and not realize that you have some material or object in there that turns out to be conductive. The point is, a short can kill hardware, and not just one piece of hardware, sometimes potentially multiple pieces. And it can be hard to return products with burn marks on them and that distinct smell of burnt silicon. 10 rating for cost, 10 rating for annoyance, and yes, you should be ashamed. If the short was your fault, you get a 10 for that too, and you should feel bad. But let's look at a silver lining here so you don't have to keep feeling bad. These PC building calamities are rare, exceedingly rare in some instances, and often fixable thanks to advances in PC component functionality over the past 20 plus years or so. If you find yourself facing one of these situations, remember that there is no shame in reaching out for help, and also remember that there are many, many resources available online to walk you through the process of building a PC so that you can avoid these worst case scenarios. I would point you towards my Beginner's Guide to Building a PC playlist just to get started. That said though, these five debacles are all definitely achievable, even if it might be rare, but I know that there are some worse situations out there that have come up because PC builders can be a pretty enterprising bunch. So let me know in the comments if you know of an even worse situation that has come up during what should have been a normal PC build. Thank you guys for watching this video. Hit the thumbs up button if you enjoyed it, and we'll see you guys next time.